Hello, this is another video with the Chemeketa Writing Center and today we're going to talk about the basics of APA citations. Specifically, we're going to talk about APA in-text citation. Now we have other videos that may help you with getting started with your research paper and those include videos on avoiding plagiarism, using scholarly sources, setting up your APA document, and when to use block quotes versus when to use your regular normal quotes. And I also will have another video for you on your APA Works Cited page. Right now today we're just going to focus on APA in-text citation. But before we begin, I want to share a little secret with you. And that secret is that a lot of students want to create their paper first. They want to type their paper out, then they want to go back and add citation, then finally they want to do their work cited process. That is kind of upside down in terms of how much work is required. If that's your process, writing the paper first, then adding citation, then the works cited page, you're actually doing about three times as much work as if you take my tip, the secret I'm going to tell you. And that is start with your works cited page or your references page for APA. Start by making your list of your references, trying as best you can to make that list in proper APA citation. And like I said, we're going to have another video on on making that references page. But if you start that way, what you will find is that then as you're writing your document, you can make your citation as you're writing, which is really important, and then you're not constantly flipping back through a stack of papers, you're not having to flip back through multiple online windows, you've got your work site, your references page or your works cited page right there, and you can just look and see, okay, that's the author's last name, that's the year, we're good to go. If you create your references page first, you will save yourself a lot of time. The other part of that tip is create the document as you go. Create the documentation as you go. That's going to save you a lot of time. As you're creating your document, as you're typing, add citation as you need it. Don't wait till the end of your document to go back and add your in-text citation. Add it as you need it. And again, remember we have other videos about when to cite and how often to cite. But the basic principle is if you had to look back at your source, if you didn't know it prior to writing that paper, it needs an in-text citation. APA does not limit citation to just quotations. Instead, you need citation any time you refer back to a source. Any bit of information that you got from a source needs a citation. Each and every piece of information from a source gets a citation, not just at the end of paragraphs, not just at the end of the paper. Each and every piece of information is going to get the type of citation we're going to talk about, which is your in-text citation. That is the citation that happens within your document. Now, what is the di main difference between MLA and APA in-text citation? Many of you may be more used to MLA in-text citation. MLA doesn't care about the year that something was published as much. So that's a less important part of the MLA citation. MLA is just author page number. And if you don't have page numbers, it's just author. APA cares about credibility and accuracy. The year is vital to knowing how reliable the information is, so for APA the year is a key part of the citation. Always, as you're gathering your research, make sure that your sources have a year of publication. If there's not a year of publication, there is workarounds for that. But just really, that's what, uh, something to make sure that you're getting scholarly sources, is the year of publication should be pretty easy to ascertain in a scholarly source. So that year is going to be a key part of your citation. Now, we're going to talk about a couple of different ways to do that in-text citation. And over here, I've got my document. It's all set up. And I've got my header. I've got it in the APA format. Again, we have another video on how to set that up. 
Now, so I've got my first body paragraph. I've got a lead into the quote. And then I just go straight into the quote. That's called a quote with no introductory, no lead into it, and no introductory phrase. So, or they also call it a signal phrase. So I just do my quote. And then at the end, let's take a look at what I've got here. I have author's last name, comma, year, comma, P period, year, sorry, page number. So author's last name, year, page. If you look at what that looks like in the generic right here. So you have your sentence or your quotation right here. You have author's last name, year, and P period or PP period if it's multiple pages, right like that. What does this look like? Using an example of a text from a human services course. So here's our example. Quotation, there are deep problems, painful problems, problems that quick fix approaches can't solve. No period here. Go right into my parenthesis. Author's last name, year, P period, the page number. If I didn't have a page number, it's an online source that has no page number, I would just have author and year. The author and year is absolutely essential. Now, couple of things here. I don't have his first name. I don't have his full name. I don't have his title. All I have is his last name and then I have the year. And I don't have the place of publication. I don't have the article title. I don't have the book title. All I need for my in-text citation is the author's last name, the year, the page number. All that other information is going to come on your references page. So don't try and cram more than is required here at the in-text citation. So now a couple of other pointers here. Verify your edition of the textbook or of the book that you have. This is especially relevant for human services courses, criminal justice courses, classes where there may be multiple editions of the textbook. Verify your edition. I cited to the exact edition that I own, not the edition on the syllabus, not the edition on Amazon. I cited to the exact edition that was in my hands. I included my page number because I was doing a quote. The, year, the page number is not always required for paraphrasing. All right. What I just did there was I had said that the year was not required and the year is always required. And so what you don't need sometimes is the page number. If you don't have a page number, it's an online document, don't worry about it. If it's a quote and you do have page numbers, always include it. The page number is not required when you're just paraphrasing from the source. However, the APA handbook and most professors will strongly encourage you to use a page number wherever possible. So so my recommendation is that you always include a page number with your qu quotation and with your paraphrase. If your source has page numbers, use the page numbers. And again, I'm not writing out the word page. I'm not doing PPS. I'm not, all I'm doing is P period space page number. That's what I'm doing. And be careful that it's in this exact format. author's last name, year, page number. Now APA loves what's called a signal phrase. And the APA encourages using the author's name in the body of your, of your lead-in sentence. How does that look? For a paraphrase, it looks like this. Covey, his last name, parenthesis, the year of publication, parenthesis, goes on to give the example of his son's struggles in school. I'm paraphrasing that section. No quotation marks are necessary, but I'm explaining what Covey said. The year went right 
right next to his name. Notice that I did not have commas setting it off. Notice that I didn't include the article name. I didn't include the book name. I didn't um, include the place of publication. I didn't include the volume number. None of that stuff. All that APA requires is the author's last name and the year. Now, how does that look for a quotation where I do want the page number? Covey, 1989, in parentheses again, claims, comma, to introduce my quote, then my quote. Interdependence is a higher value than independence. Then, no period yet, go ahead and do your parentheses, P period, page number 9, and then your period comes after right there. Your period is coming at the end of your sentence. And that includes all of your citation. Same thing up here when you're just doing a straight up quote with no signal phrase still. Period at the end of the citation, not at the end of the quotation. The period is going after you're done with all that citation information. A way to think of it is that period is showing that all that information goes with that quotation. So, to summarize, we have the signal phrase that uses Covey's last name. As soon as I use his last name, I'm going to go ahead and give the year. Then I launch into my quote, then after the quote I give the page number. And I am going to do this each and every time I refer back to Covey. Covey, year. Covey, year. You've got to think in terms of author, year. Anytime you're doing the author, go ahead and do the year. That's the APA format. That year is always going to be inside parentheses. So, come, so does to summarize what we just did, you can do your basic in-text citation without an introductory phrase or with an introductory phrase. And we did a couple of examples of that. Covey, comma, 1989, comma, P period 16. That's how to do it without the signal phrase. With the signal phrase, we did it Covey, 1989, claims interdependence is a higher value than independence, page 9. Now, how do I handle when I have a couple of special situations? One is the special situation of multiple authors. Now, two authors, we're going to use and in the text and and the and symbol in our parentheses. What do I mean? So if I'm doing a signal phrase, research by Smith and Smythe, 1999 supports. I'm writing out my and. I don't want to use that ampersand in the body of my sentence. That's kind of clunky and not professional. So my sentence is research by Smith and Smythe. My go ahead and put my year in parentheses, just like I did in my basic example. I go on to explain what I mean, support. And then at the end of that sentence, if I needed to, I would do my page number. If I'm doing, I don't have Smith and Smythe in the signal phrase, I just have the quote, like my first example, and then I'm going to do it all. I'm going to have Smith ampersand and Smythe. And remember, I'm not showing their first names. I'm not showing the publication name. Don't have the article title. All that's required by APA is Smith and Smythe 1994. And if I had a page number, I'd go ahead, comma, page 9, just like that. Now, what if I have three authors? Three to five authors, I list all the last names in the first occurrence and then et al. in subsequent citations. That means the first time I cite it, everybody's last name gets to come. Kane, comma, Carson, comma, Singleton, comma, Brown, and Houston, 1999. Next time I cite that same source, I'm going to do Kane. He's the first one. The first author listed is the author who gets the most credit. Kane et al. 1999. 
Now, a little bit of, a, of an important thing for when you're reading your scholarly sources, the list of authors is important. Don't rearrange the order. If Cain is the first author listed, that's the author you list. Don't do alphabetical order or anything like that. The reason for that is when you publish a scholarly paper, the order of the authors reflects the amount of work that went in. Kane did the majority of the work, Carson helped out, Singleton helped a little less, Brown and Houston maybe just consulted on it. So Kane gets the most credit, Kane et al., comma, 1999. Now if I have six or more sources, I don't need to list out everybody in the first occurrence. I'm just going to use et al. right from the get-go. Jones et al., comma, 1999. If I'm quoting another source, we're going to talk about that next. So, recap, multiple authors, two authors with an and, three to five authors, list them all in the first occurrence, and then do et al. in the subsequent, six or more authors, we're going to use et al. in the first and all subsequent citations. And that should say authors right there. Now what happens when we're quoting another source? All right, so what happens when, when your source is quoting another source? This is another common problem because in a scholarly source, your source likes to give credit to where they got their information and where they got their research. And so a lot of times what you have is they're citing someone else and you want to cite that same piece of information. You need to give credit to the same source that they did because they were courteous and they gave credit to Freud or whoever, you need to extend the same courtesy. And so what you want to do is if you're citing the same expert used by your text, you handle it like this. The last name as cited in, author's last name, year, PP, the page numbers. You should handle secondary sources like the APA suggests. Here's another one. Freud, as cited in Covey, 2004, page 8, period. Now, I want to show you, for both the multiple author problem and the quoting in another source, we have our resources in the writing lab, but sometimes you're not able to access those or you just want a quick answer. The resources at the Purdue OWL and what I did was I was in Google and I just typed in my question that I had about APA citation with multiple sources. I typed in OWL. That's going to bring up writing labs so I always want to include that OWL APA multiple authors. It took me right to this page here. So if I am if I forget my rules on multiple authors or I want to show the indirect sources, I show it right there as cited in Smith. So I can look up my OWL resources if I get lost or I don't feel like watching this whole video again, I've got options. Now common problem that students are going to run into is they can't find an author. Who do you cite if you don't have an author? The first question I want you to ask yourself is, is this an academic source? Because a scholarly source is an article from a journal or a review, it's going to have an author. So if it's not, if it, you can't find an author, you need to be able to tell yourself, is this a credible source? Is it just somebody's blog? That's not a credible source. Is it some random web page that looks like it's related to your source, that's not a scholarly source. Is it Wikipedia? That's not a scholarly source. 
Now, sometimes in some courses, you're going to be citing to a lot of government documents. Remember that your government agency or your association can be an author, and that can be a credible source. So let's look at an example with that. According to the American Psychological Association, 2014, again, that year is critical. So I can cite to the organization as the author of that information. So your government agency can be an author your um, association can be an author. So if you're on Oregon.gov and you find some good information from DHS, you can cite Department of Human Services or Child Support Division, whatever that um, author is of that document. You can cite to that agency. Do not cite State of Oregon for something that is obviously a specific Department of Human Services or Child Support Enforcement, cite to the most specific organization or governmental a entity you can. Don't just cite to the whole Oregon.gov because that's not going to let your reader find that source. As a last resort, you can't find an author, you can't find a government agency that created the document, you can't find an association like the American Psychological Association. Your last resort is to use the title of the article. And let me show you an example with that. A similar study was done of patients learning to walk again. The article title is Learning to Walk, so I have that. Learning to Walk and then the year. Gotta have that year. If you have neither an author's last name or a year, that's a big red flag that maybe this is not a scholarly source. Remember, we have other videos for you on finding scholarly sources. We're also hoping to make future videos on, on handling those governmental sources specifically. I hope that our overview has helped you out, though, with your basic in-text citations. Let's summarize briefly what we learned. We learned that our basic format is author's last name, comma, comma, year, comma, page numbers. That's our basic format. When we don't have a signal phrase, it looks just like that, author's last name, year, page number. When we have a signal phrase, and that means the author's name in the body of our sentence, we have his last name, Covey, year, and then the rest of the information. Author, year, quotation, page number at the end there before the period. We talked about using multiple authors. Two authors gets and. Three to five authors, we list them all the first time, then we do et al from then on. Six or more authors, et al from the get-go with our in-text citations. And then we talked about how to handle when we're quoting another source and how to handle no author. Remember, each and every piece of information is going to get one of these in-text citations. Even if you've already cited Covey, even if you just cited it the sentence before, even if you have three or four other citations in that same paragraph, it's going to get a citation. Each and every piece of information that came from a source is going to be handled with an APA in-text citation. The number one problem in research papers that we see in the writing lab and that we see when students come back and they say they're not getting the grade that they hoped for is they're not citing often enough. Cite frequently, cite each and every piece of information, and use your proper APA format. Last name, year, page number. Those are the essential pieces of an APA format. Now the last piece of information that I want to remind you of is this is so much easier if you've created your references page first. Because, let me tell you what happens, if you've created your references page first, you can just look and see, oh, last name is Covey, year of publication is 2004, type, 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 everything's in your paper really fast. You don't have to go and shuffle, oh, who is this article written by, shuffle some more pages to find the year, shuffle again to find the page numbers. You've got it all in your references list. 
do that for each paper. Start your references list before you start typing your paper and you'll save yourself hours and hours of flipping because it'll all be right at your fingertips for drafting your in-text citations. As you do a quotation, include your citation. Don't wait till the end of the paper to include your APA style citation. Thank you so much and I hope that this video has helped you. Remember, we're here to help you with any further problems you may have.